Yeah, welcome to Aspects of Abraham 27. And we are living stones gathering around God's word, which feeds us and we help one another move forward in faith. Um, God's word is food for our souls and we we need it so we praise God that he gives us his good word and we've been opening up the story of Abraham uh, and it's right at the uh, early parts of the Bible um, you, you know you've got the uh, creation account then you, we move on to um, the table of nations and, and Cain and his offspring and then the flood and then we get to um, chapter 11 which is all and all this most of it's taken part in Mesopotamia suddenly we get to Abraham at the end of chapter 11 and moving on into 12 and th then the story begins to open up and the Lord is showing us something that we need to know and so we've been working slowly through this story of Abraham and the point we've got to at the moment is um, where Isaac had just had a narrow escape from his point of view although the, the Lord um, knew what was going to happen there and Abraham obeyed and we saw the wonderful picture of the Lord Jesus Christ being sacrificed there um, through the story of Abraham and Isaac. So um, Abraham went back to um, his servants and they got up and set out together for Beersheba. Um, and Abraham settled in Beersheba. Sheba. So we can see the ridge route quite nicely here. There's Hebron and Mamre where Abraham used to live before Sodom and Gomorrah got blown up and all the dust from, and debris was, was uh, falling on the land and he moved all the way down here, down the ridge route of the Judean hills um, towards Beersheba. Beersheba is a bit further down there so um abraham moved uh to um beer sheba and he and he more or less stayed there now we don't know how sarah took isaac's close shave with with abraham's dagger we we don't know cause, because we're not told um but we do know that sarah was living in hebron or close to mamre when she died but abraham was in beersheba which is some 30 miles to the south um so this this is what we read here. Um, she died, that's Sarah, at Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham went to mourn for Sarah and to weep over her. Uh, that's a strong word, isn't it? Weep. Um, so this is the first time we read of Abraham weeping we, we've heard of of him um, doing uh, so many other things um, but we we've not read of him weeping um, we didn't read of him weeping when he left the city of Ur or when he left the city of Haran and he'd left his brother there Nahor and their families we don't read of him weeping then um, when he crossed over the Euphrates 
we don't read of him weeping and we re we read of him laughing when the lord told him that he was going to be a, a father um but not weeping and yet don't life's seasons come to us all there's there's a time to laugh and there's a time to weep and these seasons come to us all and they came to abraham too so now with sarah lying dead there um in in the tent he he kneeled down beside her and he wept he was filled with grief they'd been through through so much together hadn't they think of all the things they'd been through together and all all the near misses and 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 yet they'd somehow god had kept them together until isaac was produced they're they're only offspring of, of abraham and sarah together so abraham must have been thinking of all those times and he, he, when they first set out he said you've got to say you you, you are my sister so, so don't tell them i'm your husband and and all all those and finally that got ironed out because god's not happy with deceit so abraham would have been thinking about all these experiences that they'd been through together and he truly wept and that word weep it, it it's stronger than to shed tears or, or to cry it, it's uh, it's there's a wailing in the word as well in the, in the hebrew word to weep you know when it comes really from deep within us and we wail and and something at the very soul of uh, the heart of our being wails for some reason that we have to wail and and it comes to us all sometimes we think i'm done with all that weeping and then we find out we're not it comes to us again and um, but this is the seasons of life it, it's the ups and the downs and um, we read that peter wept bitterly remember when he heard the cock crowing and jesus had forewarned him but he didn't believe it and then suddenly he realized jesus's words were true and and peter had betrayed his best and most loyal friend and peter wept bitterly and and there's a humbling thing about weeping isn't there um, it, it's it reduces us uh, and that's good it's a good thing to weep before the lord because the lord is close to those who are of a broken and a contrite heart and, and weeping can do that not all crying because sometimes we, we cry you know for the wrong things like we cry because we've been found out <laughs> oh no and and that's not a good reason to cry we need to weep before the lord for a, a good reason and abraham here he he was he was weeping seriously weeping remember the ephesian converts they wept on the neck of paul when he said you you're not going to see me again i'm i'm going and they wept on his neck and and here's the thing christ stands with us in our grief because there's that lovely verse is it the shortest verse jesus wept so he stands with us in our grief he knows what it is uh, all all the highs and lows that we humans go through he has experienced and he stands with us in our grief so abraham was down in in beersheba for whatever reason and sarah had died in uh, hebron the, the hebron region and you can see the distance here um the, if you think about the dead sea there that, that's about 60 miles in length 
And that, that blue line's the distance between Beersheba and Hebron or, or Mamre, which is uh, closer to where Abraham and probably Sarah was too. Um, here's a close-up uh, of it. That, um, so there's Beersheba at the, at the bottom and there's uh, Mamre there. Hebron's just a little bit low, but that's quite a distance. And, and there's Bethlehem at the top. So we said before, didn't we, Beersheba is the the, the southernmost uh, town. And th we sometimes hear the phrase from Dan to Beersheba. Dan was the tribe that had the uh, furthest uh, territory north. So um, from in, in, I know in the UK we sometimes say from Land's End to John O'Groats. That's the top to the bottom and that it was Dan to be a Sheba in Israel so that that gives us a, a little bit of p perspective there so we don't know how Sarah um, took the news of Isaac's close call with Abraham's knife but we do know she was fiercely loyal um, of Isaac's protection. Um, she got rid of Hagar and that slave girl's son. She was angry about that. She was fiercely protective of Isaac. So how she took the news of, of what Abraham did... Um, we we don't know we're, we're not told um but she had moved back to mamre or hebron and 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 maybe that's all we need to know the road for married couples does not always run smoothly uh, it, so, some married couples have a great marriage don't they and that's great praise god for that but it doesn't always work out like that and abraham and sarah had seen their ups and their downs she had been sent off twice to could a very dangerous situation with two other men men of power too so but but we know she she did have a humility about and she obeyed abraham but when it come to her son maybe things were different um but we we can't speculate too much o over that um there are some things which are private even in the bible abraham and sarah um and we have to respect the privacy sometimes we 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 get involved in other people's private affairs don't we uh, you know and we and we, we uh, <laughs> tell people you know oh i'm only telling you this so so that you can pray because i know they would want you to pray <laughs> and then it can end up in reckless gossip <laughs> which is not pleasing to god at all so some things are private and, and we have to leave it there so Sarah was uh, 127 years old when she died, um, which is a long age, but not as long as others in the line. So um, Sarah is the only woman whose age is recorded in Scripture. How about that? When when she died, um, and she meets with this distinction um, because she's the wife of of Abraham and the mother of the promised seed Isaac. So um, Sarah was from a line of long living people. God had deemed it that way. There's something special about this line here. And we can trace it through. Luke traces it through for us in Luke chapter 3. The line to Christ. And and it was it was a long living line. Um, do you remember when Jacob stood before Pharaoh? Pharaoh was interested in this. Because the Pharaohs themselves, they tended not to live too long. Probably interbreeding didn't help. 
you know, they married real, real close. Uh, and Abraham and Sarah's family married close too, but there was a, a difference with them. And and it, it, now's not the time to explain it, but, but suffice to say, um, there was a big difference between uh, Pharaoh's interbreeding and and Abraham's interbreeding, and it, it goes back to the to the history of what God was doing there in those early days in the Neolithic era with with Adam and Eve in the garden. We're not talking about the Paleolithic era. This started in the Neolithic era. Okay, so Pharaoh was interested in this, and he wanted to know Jacob. Jacob, how old are you? And and Jacob said to Pharaoh, um, the years of my sojourning are 130 years. <laughs> so few and difficult have, they, have the years of my life been. Uh, nor have they nor have they attained the years that my fathers lived during the days of their sojourning now notice um uh, jacob knew that his predecessors had lived long lives and we read that don't we because we're given the ages um adam lived to 930 years um, and you can re you read the accounts, but after the flood, the ages started to tumble drastically. I, I think um, was it uh, Noah's um, sons? That it was at that point that that they they lived about um, six hundred years or so. So it started to come down drastically, and God had said the years of your lives will be 120, and Moses did live to 120, but they hadn't dropped that far yet. So Shem, I think, lived to um, 600 and something, um, and they started to drop drastically from that point. Also, notice that Jacob, here he talks about his sojourning. They understood that they were sojourners. And they um, were, were living in tents. And, and this is important for us to know. Because Abraham also um, referred to himself as a sojourner. And it's important for us to, to grasp this. So Sarah had died, 127 years old. And Abraham needed and desired to make funeral arrangements. So he spoke to the local Hittites. And the, the Hittites lived around that area at, at Hebron. They were originally from um, the region that is modern Turkey, Anatolia. The Hittites, they had a long history and there were people before them and people before them. There, there are a long history that you, you can read about in, in the Hittites. And they, they had ventured south and were occupying this this territory so then abraham arose from the bedside of his dead wife and spoke to the hittites i am a stranger and a sojourner notice that among you give me a burial burial site among you that i may bury my dead out of my sight Okay, fair enough. So um, the Hittites w were aware that Abraham was a special person, um, referred to as a prince, and and they made a bit of a show of offering him the opportunity of burying his dead wife in any of their picturesque tombs. Um, but there was something that that had kept Abraham's family close and separate from the surrounding tribes uh, and, the, and the surrounding nations in life. They all, they didn't go into the towns and they uh, kept themselves separate. Um, and, and so it would be in death. Abraham knew of a cave in Mamre 
that was ideally suited for a family tomb. The Hittites replied to Abraham, Sir, listen to us, you are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of our tombs. None of us will refuse you his tomb for burying your dead. Then Abraham rose and bowed down before the people of the land, the Hittites. He said to them, If you are willing to let me bury my dead, then listen to me and intercede with Ephron, son of Zohor, on my behalf, so he will sell me the cave of Machpelah. It's Genesis 23, 7 to 9. So Ephron was the tomb's owner. And when Ephron heard his name mentioned, he saw an opportunity to sell the field as well as the cave. And Ephron mentions that he is willing to freely give the cave and the field in which the cave sits. Abraham replies by saying he's willing to buy the field too. How much is it? Abraham is told that the land is worth 400 shekels. But, adds Ephron, what is that between me and you? Please bury your dead. So, e evidently, once the pr price has been mentioned, then that's the deal. Uh, unless you want to barter. And Abraham didn't want to barter. He was prepared to pay it. The interchange here between Abraham and, and the Hittites in, in Genesis 23 is an interesting window to look through to, to see how business was conducted in, in, at that time. Um, th there seems to be a high degree of civility uh, but it seems there's also some affectation and there's an underlying script here. But Abraham was a wise man and he understood how to proceed. Notice Abraham bowed down. He was humble here. Uh, and so he he bought the field and, and, and the cave. So uh, Abraham laid Sarah in the cave which was called Machpelah and the Hittites had legally transferred it over to Abraham. So Abraham now owned that piece of land. That piece. Um, this wasn't the inheritance that he was to receive um, because when you are when you receive an inheritance it, you don't buy it. It's given to you. And the Lord would indeed give Abraham a lot more land but this section here was legally bought by Abraham. Um, so the cave at Machpelah, you, you can still see it actually but it's got a monument built over it. Um, it's, it's had a monument built on it um, since ooh, Herod's time I believe, a long time ago. But it's still there, people go there to see it at Hebron. So Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave in the field of Machpelah near Mamre which is at Hebron, in the land of Canaan. So the field and the cave in it were deeded to Abraham by the Hittites as a burial site. So um, <clears throat> Abraham um, would himself be buried in that cave later on along with Isaac and his wife Rebecca and then Jacob along with his wife Leah. Now you know Jacob, he, he had um, four wives which between them they, they um, gave birth to the twelve sons, the twelve tribes of Israel. So, um, 
notice all those people in the cave at Machpelah uh, were all in the line to Christ, each one of them. Um, Rachel didn't die in, in Hebron. She died near Bethlehem. And the tomb of Rachel is over there um, because Jacob really loved Rachel and he would have wanted her buried with him. But instead it was Leah and Leah was God's um, person for the line of Christ to come through. And there were, there were reasons for that, which we won't go into now. Let's stick to the subject. Okay, so um, we notice that as Abraham was talking to the... Uh, Hittites he referred to himself as a sojourner as did Jacob remember that so um, th this is important be because um, we sometimes hear people say that Israel was slaves in Egypt for 430 years um, but that's a that's a misreading of the text. Um, we read now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was four hundred and thirty years. So we need to read this correctly um, because um, the, the the text here this is the Masoretic text. Uh, by the way, um, it, the Septuagint is even more forthright on on this issue. But e even in the Masoretic text, we read that the sojourning of the children of Israel in Egypt was four hundred and thirty years. Uh, it does. We 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 don't read that. Did you hear what I said? The sojourning of the children of Israel in Egypt was four hundred and thirty years. But that's not what it says. The text actually says the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt. So the meaning there is the sojourning of the nation who at that point were living in Egypt. The sojourning started with Abraham who was a sojourner. And so um, Isaac and Jacob also and all, all the way through to the exodus. So, um, the 430 years starts from when Abraham left the city of Ur and that's when Abraham began the journey and when he received the promise. And that's the point Paul makes in Galatians 3, 16 to 18 when he says the promises were spoken to Abraham. The law which came 430 years afterwards. It's important for us to, to understand that. Um, do you remember that um, the Lord spoke to Abraham saying, from your offspring there'll be 400 years until they, the people come back to the land. And that's from the birth of Isaac. The 400 years starts there. And there were 30 years prior to that that Abraham had uh, set out from the city of Ur when he was 70 years old. So that's the 430 years. God's timing is very specific. And it says in Exodus, to the very day they left Egypt. So that's important for us to understand. <clears throat> okay, so thanks for staying with me there. A few technical points there. But all good and all interesting. And the Lord wants us to understand these um points that are made through the story of Abraham. So, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this wonderful story of Abraham that's there for our benefit that we may learn, Lord. Lord, we see we saw today that Abraham wept. And we have to say sometimes, Lord, weeping comes to us too. Uh, but we thank you that in our times of sorrow, you too are a man of sorrows. And you know what it feels like, Lord, to weep. And you stand with us at our broken points, Lord. But we thank you, Lord, that all these seasons come and go and you build us up and we learn 
from those valleys that we go through. So help us also, Lord, to be like Abraham, to be humble as he was before the Hittites, and, and to be obedient as he was before you, Lord, and to have that broken and contrite heart that he also had. So we know Abraham had to grow into these uh, attributes and qualities that you gave him, Lord. May we also grow in the fruit of the Spirit, we pray, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray for those who, who really do need you in a special way at the moment. Lord, be with Brian Oxborough, be, be with Lenice, she needs help, Lord. Be with our brother Gary, bless him, Lord. Let your light shine upon him, we pray, Father. Be with Frances Morris again, we pray for her, Lord. Be with Matt McGee in Australia. Be with these brothers and sisters, we pray. And Lord, let your hand of strength and healing come upon them, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, um, on Sunday, we'll, we'll carry on. We're getting closer to the end now, aren't we? <laughs> Who would have thought tw we're on Abraham, aspects of Abraham, 28? That's a lot. But there's that much in there. And, and every section of the story is good for us to know and understand and delve into, get deeper into God's word. So we'll be, we'll be on uh, the, the next section the, uh, Sunday. And, and also on Sunday we've got um, communion. We, we have communion on the first Sunday in the month, on, on the Sunday live at 9 a.m. BST. So if you want to, um, you can join with us in, in communion. It's good for us to do this and to fellowship together on Living Stones because you, we know we said Abraham and Sarah were on a journey. Well, we also are on a journey and we are traveling together. Uh, the Lord has um, deemed it so and, and we are following w w what the Lord is doing here and listening to the Holy Spirit. So as living stones together, we we move forward, uh, encouraging, listening to what the Lord says, sharing in different ways that we do. Um, and the, the Lord helps us to grow. Uh, so that's, that's a blessing, isn't it? And that's important for each, each one of us to do. Okay. So it's Wednesday today, isn't it? So on Friday, um, we've got um, the book at my bedside with Hazel. That's uh, Christine Mahoney's mum. And she will be speaking to us. And, uh, and she's got some good things for us to, to say and to note. So uh, praise God for all his goodness to us. Um, so be blessed today and go in the strength of the Lord. God bless you.